moisture, lift and an unstable atmosphere. Together, these three ingredients build a thunderstorm. Moisture usually comes from the oceans. Lift is created by a force, such as a cold front, a mountain range, or heating of the day that makes the air move upwards. And an unstable atmosphere is formed when the air near the ground is warmer than the air above, allowing it to freely rise. When these three ingredients come together, that's where you'll find storms. And where there are storms, there are certain people who travel thousands of kilometres to chase them. They are on the hunt to capture the perfect bolt of lightning flashing across the skies. They are chasing bolts. I'm Tyne Logan. I'm a weather presenter for the ABC in Perth. The more I learn about weather, the more it fascinates me. Understanding how different systems interact with one another and then being able to watch it play out in real life, seeing the weather through people actually on the ground. Something to get excited about if you've been pushing through that build-up at the moment. Now, that's broadly been brought about by an unstable air mass high up. It's mesmerising, that precise moment when storm chasers can capture a weather event from their lens. It gives you a glimpse into the power of nature. That's been helping trigger that uplift of warm air and the onshore winds to the northwest of that trough are providing that crucial ingredient of moisture. Now, if we have a look at this photo, this is the uplift that I'm talking about, the tall towering clouds up through the atmosphere. That was captured by Jordan Cantalo in Derby this afternoon. Jordan Cantalo is arguably one of Australia's most passionate storm photographers. His photos capture the essence of an Aussie summer storm. He intertwines the landscape with the clouds, the light. And if he's in the right spot, his ultimate goal, capturing bolts. You can almost smell it. You can feel the raw power in his photos. But a peek behind the lens, you'll see a man often drenched in sweat and red dust. A person who is constantly on the search and always on the move. Jordan spends hundreds of dollars on fuel as he travels for thousands of kilometres in search of bolts. Often after a night of chasing storms, he will end up sleeping in the back of his car through 35 plus degrees Celsius nights. Each summer in December, Jordan books time off his job as a fire operations officer. He leaves from his home in Perth to drive north towards some of the bigger weather events in the country that year, right before the wet season, in the build-up, to try and capture that perfect shot. It's not just luck in capturing bolts. Jordan is constantly reading the weather to make sure he's in the right spot with his camera pointed in the right direction. It's a lot of things to get right. But behind every successful photograph, there is sacrifice. Saying yes to one thing means saying no to another. Have you heard a pelican before? Of course I have, that's what it sounds like. Alright, here you go. Can you see? <laughs> Crazy. Here. In here? Yeah. That's in the middle of the desert. At the start of every summer, Jordan keeps a close eye on what the weather up north is doing. Oh, so hot. You know how hot it was there yesterday? What? 47 degrees. 
Isn't that amazing? Bruh. Go Pretty warm, isn't it? Go here? Yeah. What about this colour? What colour is that one? As he prepares to take off for several weeks, he spends time with his two boys. Jordan's wife, Irene, stays home to keep the home fires burning. I think I love that Jordan has a passion that he can pursue. Um, I mean, we do miss him when he's gone uh, for the few weeks that he goes. Um, but just hearing, you know, the joy in his voice. Um, and I mean, you don't, I think you don't get many opportunities in life to be able to, you know, follow your dreams and pursue your passion. So I think it's really nice that Jordan gets to do that. Yeah. Pretty selfish of me, I guess, in a sense where I can, I, I disappear, but um, it's incredible that I can have the support from Irene, yeah, as well. I don't think it's selfish though. I mean, it's a big chunk of time, but it's, it's, um, and it's great when he comes back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's just a small chunk of the year, so that's okay. I do worry for Jordan a bit when he's out, but Jordan um, he sends me, you know, like pinpoint locations of where he is you know, like what his next location is possibly, if he's gonna change his location or how long he's gonna be there for. Um, and I, you know, I always check like, do you know, have enough water or have you carried your EPIRB? If, are you walking away from your car? And I suppose it's kind of like those motherly things, if I can say that. Um, just wanna make sure that he's okay. But uh, Jordan, I suppose he sends me all those things so then I don't worry so much. You don't like the stories when I say, you should have seen this big bolt. I know, sometimes, <laughs> yeah. 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 sometimes he saves those know. stories for when he gets back home, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll be back. In a little bit. Jordan makes a dart to the Pilbara region as a starting point. The Pilbara in Western Australia is a good spot for storms during the Australian summer. It's an area that is known to have all three key ingredients for thunderstorms. Plus, the flat landscape makes it easier to capture the weather with little trees and low-lying shrubs. Each day, Jordan determines where the next storm might be. Yeah, so we are about 250, 270 k's south of Port Hedland on uh, the Great Northern Highway. So we're about 80 k's to the west of Roy Hill uh, Mine Site, which is out this way. And then you've got Karajini um, National Park, spectacular national park, just to our southwest. It's like surfing, you're trying to find the perfect swell on the perfect break with the perfect conditions. And that, that's essentially what we're doing here, except for swell, I'm looking for clouds so, and the storm. So I'm trying to find the perfect setup, the perfect composition for photos, the great access, everything to line up. And, and that's just a constant battle. You know, it's, it's the endless chase of trying to find that perfect composition. At the moment, the forecast are for storms to start forming up mid-afternoon, so about two o'clock or so. And you can sort of start to feel that now. I mean, the air, I mean, it's, it was 40 degrees by, what was it, nine o'clock this morning. The air feels heavier today, so the humidity's up a bit. And we've got that also with the cloud as well, starting to build. Some of these cumulus clouds are starting to get a bit of structure to them as well. So good time of day for it. The heat's still drawing into the Pilbara at the moment. And um, I can see this is really going to build. And look, the forecast is showing that it's going to build about two or three o'clock. And it's starting now, so once she really starts to go, She's going to pop big time. Of course, where there are storms, there is often rain, which can make it challenging to take photographs in. But it's not just rain that you have to navigate around. It's fires too. The fires reflect an orange glow on the clouds. 
I heard many years ago that the Kimberley burns, I think in total on average every three to five years, the whole entire landscape, it, which, which is pretty phenomenal when you think of it, it's a huge amount of area. So you've got, you know, the thunderstorms that come through this time of year, they'll start fires, they'll run around for a little bit. You've got these huge dumps of water that comes down with the thunderstorms, but also the monsoon that comes. So that's, everything's, you know, very dry at the moment, but you go to the end of wet season, everything's lush and green and wet. All the waterfalls are running, then the cycle happens again, you know. Um, everything starts to cure again, the fires start, they run through, they do their thing. Build up happens, thunderstorm, lightning, rain, waterfalls, you know, and it's, it's, it's amazing. It's incredible to watch and it's almost purely untouched up this way, so it's nature pretty much at its core. Bushfires is something Jordan knows all about from his job as a fire operations officer with Parks and Wildlife in Western Australia. I think anyone that works in fire management, whether in private or public sector, you've got to have a fairly, you've got to be clued on with the weather. Most of my briefings and stuff are pretty detailed weather and you talk to any of the crew guys or any of the air crew that I brief and stuff, it's pretty detailed weather reports and I maybe go above and beyond most others, um, probably to some people's annoyance, but hey, I, I like it, so we're going to be listening to it. <laughs> I, I've just got this fascination. I, 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 love, I love seeing it as, as a massive, like several parcels of air, I guess you could see. And, and just knowing that, you know, and I'm looking at the sky now, looking at this, it's blue skies at the moment. We know we've got storms building up the afternoon. So what's happening? What's happening in the atmosphere right now, you know? I wish that it wasn't clear. I wish that you could see it, you know? I wish you could put some glasses on and see the twisting and turning of the air because what we can't see is there's things happening right now and that blows my mind. I love watching, you know, this just literally as we've been speaking, there's a tiny little cloud that's popped up out of nothing, you know? Why, why is that just, I wanna just know why that's popped up. You know, watching the big storms build up, you know, you see once there's maturing and things, it's like huge cauliflowers that are just building and building and building and building. That is, that blows my mind. I can just sit there and watch that. I just think that's phenomenal. And to a dual degree, I mean, I get shivers talking about it now. I can feel it in my legs and my arms. That I'd love just to be able to, you know, you can't, but I'd love just to fly through that because you just to feel it, to feel that energy, feel that power. One of the things about storms is that they can be totally unpredictable. You just don't know what it's going to do. Like, there's no set way of where it's going to move, how it's going to act. There's no control over what happens. So you're basically at the mercy of Mother Nature. So many times, I've been chasing a storm, lightning's going crazy, stop out of the car, set the camera up, stops. Get in the car, starts again. Get out of the car, stops. It's, there's a lot of luck involved sometimes. Dan Searle is another bolt chaser based in Perth, Western Australia. He's been taking photos of storms for over 20 years. You can tell Dan gets very excited when he comes across a good one. This is the most unbelievable storm I've ever f***ing seen. F***ing look at that! Woo. Standing in front of a storm with a big shelf cloud, you know, it's full of hail and lightning popping out all around you. It, it, yeah, it gets heart pumping and you just feel alive. Um, and in awe, just getting out in Budja, a country. That's, yeah, that's what I love about it and being a Noongar man, being out in Noongar country. I feel at home. It energises me. The moment I see that storm, I just get that adrenaline come through and I'm ready to go. You get a shot, you want a better one. It's just, it's just a never ending quest to get that photo, that perfect photo. I'll, still, I'll go until I can't anymore. I'll keep chasing until the day I die.
So why do certain people feel the urge to chase bolts? There's a lot of things that would go into chasing a storm. Firstly, it's miraculous, it's stunning, it's amazing, there's adrenaline. Secondly, you can't control it. You can't say that um, you know when to find a great storm at, uh, uh, that'll be there like at three o'clock every day. What on earth is this? It's miraculous and it's sensational and it's astonishing. And I'm just a tiny ant in the universe next to this marvel. Author Julia Baird has researched and written about storm chasers in her book Phosphorescence on awe, wonder and things that sustain you when the world goes dark. Paying attention to the world and being awed by things and dwarfed by things are much larger than ourselves. And also wondering, like just literally things that make you stop and ask questions. And if, the, if you deliberately hunt and pursue awe and wonder and make them a part of your daily lives so you're not just seeing a sunset as you're skipping down the street or walking past a beautiful rose bush or whatever. You are making sure that you hunt it down and that it's part of the way you live. Based in Karatha in the Pilbara, Kylie is a mother of three and loves to chase bolts. I'm going to say this because this is exactly how it is, but a normal chase for me usually starts about a week before the storm starts firing. So I'll be checking um, long range forecast apps for storm probabilities and then if it's showing that there's the likelihood of storms in that area, um, I'll check every day and then as it gets closer check several times a day and then the day before i'll be checking half hour just to make sure nothing changes and in that time on the home front i'm making sure all the washing's done the, the fridge is full of food they don't have to do anything um, the house is immaculate so that i know i can just walk out and do my thing and they'll be fine at home shooting storms, I don't get home till two in the morning. So it's a little, it's a case of just pulling the car very slowly in the driveway and unpacking the car without making too much noise because, you know, they're gonna work the next day. So you don't really wanna be waking them up. There are times when um, um, my daughter went through a bit of a stage like, I don't really like you storm chasing, mum, I'm scared for you. So I uh, had to give her lots of reassurance that actually mummy takes um, Mummy's very safe when she goes out. I actually want to be around to see the next storm roll through. So a good chase is a safe chase. <laughs> For Kylie, chasing storms is more than just witnessing the power of nature. So my eldest daughter, Sian, she's 21 now. Um, she was uh, diagnosed with a tumour on her brain and severe autism at 18 months old. From that point, it was a very intense, very stressful. I guess, to be honest, there were times when it nearly broke me. Um, for a lot of that, I was a single mum. The tumour is on the part of the brain that regulates your behaviour. So it, it triggers your fight or flight response and your behaviours, your emotions. And so all of those things are impacted. And I guess the one thing, the most de uh, debilitating thing for her is her behaviour. It can be extremely violent. Um, without warning, it's like flicking a switch and uh, it's not related to environmental um, issues, it's not related to moods, it is simply uh, a chemical switch that goes off in her brain and um, it causes her to become extremely violent. It was quite dangerous, quite dangerous for Sian and quite dangerous 
for us um, as a family. It was nothing to be hit, kicked, bitten, have furniture thrown at us. Um, she used to do this thing where she'd come up to you and she'd just grab you around the neck and every now and then she would grab your neck and grab hold of it and wouldn't let go and you, you actually can't breathe. And um, it's like after she'd done that a few times, whenever she'd come near you, you find yourself flinching and, and backing off. One of the other ways that her diagnosis impacts her is her sleeping. So um, very early on, she would start her day at two o'clock in the morning and she would go flat out until about 11 o'clock at night. There was no stopping her. Bearing in mind that at this time she was having around about 500 seizures a day. That was an average day. And she was constantly climbing. So you constantly had to be alongside her because if she climbed up onto a table and had a seizure and fell down, you know, obviously that places her at risk. So caring for her was intense. There was no, you couldn't take your mind off her for a moment. Um, she had no sense of personal safety, um, you know, and then there's, you know, the medications and, and all of that kind of thing that goes with it. Um, yeah, it was, it was um, probably the hardest thing that I've ever had to, um, to go through. And I think the reason it was so hard is that no matter what I did, you couldn't change it. I've seen her, you know, just have the worst day, like the worst day in hospital. Just, I don't think many old adults would have coped with that. And then go home at the end of it and she's happy and smiling and playing with her toys like nothing has, has gone on, you know, that's, that's remarkable strength. She's made me a better person. You know, she really um, forced me to work out what my priorities are. It, um, she forced me to realize what's important. It made me realize that you only get one life. You only get one shot at life and you have to do what makes you happy. And for me, standing out in the middle of nowhere by myself under a thunderstorm, you know, Listening to that thunder roll in, the beautiful colours, the, you know, the, the smell of the rain, the whole lot. Um, that's, that's, that's what makes it all worthwhile, just for that, you know, 10, 15 minutes of doing that. It's almost like you get a recharge. You just, you know, you, you feel energised, you feel like you've just been picked up and, and boosted a bit. And, and, and you know, you take that home. It's like, yikes, that was awesome. You know, that was amazing. It's ironic, but it's finding that calm within the storm. And for me, the bigger the storm, the more dramatic, the more bolts, the more severe, the more I forget all of that behind me and just focus on what's out in front of me. And, um, you know, I'll say it, we don't do that enough in our lives. We get so wrapped up with working and everything that we just don't take enough time to stop and be still and do exactly what makes us happy. As December draws to a close, the wet season begins. In Broome, Western Australia, some of the locals come out to mark the new season. When the uh, yeah, nice little storm comes like this, everyone comes down, watches the storm, watches the lightning. Um, first good rain for the year. Um, just get wet, it just feels mint. Just, yeah. Which is great. It's the start of the wet, and um, look, you see the big lightning, and you get W's, you get oh, it's just mint. Look, look at that long one, it just took right across the side. <laughs> 
every single time when a storm comes past, we always watch it. We can never, even if it's very windy, we still come and watch it. There's no doubt storms are incredible to watch, no matter how old you are. For some, the urge is strong. They must leave to seek it out. It's as if they were born for chasing bombs. Sweet.